In this video, we're talking about NVIDIA versus AMD graphics cards in Linux and proprietary drivers versus open source drivers. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Now this video is brought to you by Purism, makers of the Librem One service line. If you're tired of being exploited online, definitely check them out. Link is in the description below. So let's jump into proprietary versus open source and really why this is AMD and Nvidia kind of squaring off in the Linux realm. Uh, it used to not be this way. Both AMD and Nvidia used to run proprietary drivers and Nvidia just spanked AMD nonstop in the Linux realm because they use a dot run executable that basically bakes the drivers into the kernel that you're using, which is a great method of actually installing proprietary drivers. AMD used the AMD GPU Pro drivers, which just suck. They always have. They still make them. Um, don't install these. They're just a pain to deal with. They usually are tied to an LTS release. And if you're running like the latest, greatest kernel, or a custom kernel, they just don't work. And it's just a pain to deal with these. So don't ever use this. AMD drivers nowadays are all baked into the kernel. And since uh, Linux 5.0 really dropped, there's no reason to use the AMD GPU Pros because you see very little performance difference between that and its open source counterpart. So uh, just know that up front. So when I say AMD, we're talking open source drivers. You don't actually need to install a driver. They just work out of the box. And then when I say NVIDIA, we're talking about the proprietary driver. Now, let's start with NVIDIA since most people have NVIDIA cards since they usually edge out AMD as far as performance, especially on the Windows realm. So you actually go to their website, you search for your driver, you download this .run file, and then you make it executable, and then you run it. Now, this .run file basically installs these proprietary drivers directly into the Linux kernel. Now, why that's important is a lot of people always asking the question, what about graphics drivers? Do I need to install the latest and greatest graphics driver? And when it comes to NVIDIA cards, the answer is yes, you need to go to the website, re-download this .run file every time you need to update and run it. Kind of a pain, and that's why I don't have an NVIDIA card. On the open source front, on AMD, however, it's all baked into the kernel itself. All you need to do is turn your computer on and install Linux. And if you have a later AMD card, I believe it goes two or three generations back now in the kernel, maybe even further now. I know they're working on compatibility, but their open source driver is awesome. It, they open sourced all their stuff last year and the Linux team has basically taken it and run with it and they've done great. They added FreeSync with Linux uh, 5.0 on the kernel and man, it, it's it's great performance. I absolutely love it. I have a Vega 64 in this computer. So when you see me gaming on Twitch or here, you know, a lot of times I do game videos as well. Uh, hey, I'm using my Vega 64. I don't like using any VMs or anything like that. When I game, I'm kind of a purist in, in that realm. So uh, that's why I use AMD because I like sticking in Linux. But what happens after you get your card up and going? So NVIDIA, you ran your .run file. You now have those drivers installed on there. Um, and then an AMD card. Hopefully you have you know something within the last couple generations and you'll have pretty much comparable performance between it and the NVIDIA. Well, you still need to install some packages. In the description below, I'll put in those packages. But uh, for AMD, it's like Mesa... Uh, Vulkan drivers, and then for NVIDIA, it's just a Vulkan library, basically. These two packages basically unlock your card so you can play any of the games, which is pretty awesome. And it's a very simple install. Most of you are probably running like a Debian-based install, so you're going to be doing sudo apt install, and then just copy-paste these commands in, and you're good. And it'll install all of them, and you'll have all the capabilities that you need to play games in Linux, uh, except for some other things. And I've gone over in past videos, if you're interested in like eSync and DXBK and those types of uh, packages to do some really obscure stuff. There's some really neat stuff you can tinker with, but if you just wanna run Steam, um, most of these packages are installed by default, so you don't really have to worry too much about it. 
But the future of Linux, really, if you're a full-time Linux person, all you want to do is run Linux, well, get yourself an AMD graphics card because that's what I game with. I absolutely love the experience. It's fantastic. I never have to worry about installing up-to-date drivers. Those packages automatically update themselves after my initial install when I have my AMD card. And it's just a great experience. So that's why I'm an AMD guy all the way through. And seeing this latest news about the Ryzen CPUs and those types of things, ah, just puts a smile on my face because uh, about five years ago, I had one of my CPUs fry and it was like a third gen Intel and I went to a fourth gen Intel CPU and I remember I had to replace my whole motherboard and it was just a big mess. I absolutely hated it. And where AMD is a lot better with uh, not changing the chipset every single time where you have to change out your motherboard with your processor. It's just such a cash grab in my opinion. But whole different rant, whole different video. For this one, open source first proprietary. Stop using proprietary. If you do not use your NVIDIA card or you're in the market for a new graphics card, get a nice AMD card. I highly recommend the RX 580, not the 590 that just came out. The 580 actually will probably give you a really good performance and it's a little bit more compatible and works a little bit better and easier out of the box. Uh, just because the 590, I remember, had some issues on some LTS releases. They haven't quite caught up because it's such a new card. So that's why I was like, the RX 580 is just such a sweet deal right now. And the performance is really, really close to the 590. I think it's like 5 or 10% uh, based on Pharaonix benchmarks. So that's it for this video. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. And a big shout out to my Patreons. Without you, this video would not be possible. And I'll see you in the next one.